All right. In this video, I'm going to overview the background sections for Lab 2. There are two background sections. The first is on longitude and latitude, both how we define these quantities and how we're going to measure them. And the second is on the nature of the seasons. Let's open up the first. So I know you've seen these lines either on a globe or on a map, the lines of longitude and latitude. They're an intersecting grid of lines such that any location on Earth can be uniquely specified by a longitude-latitude combination. Now, when I see lines of longitude, I sometimes get confused. Are those lines of changing longitude or lines of constant longitude? And the same with latitude. So to avoid confusion, in this lab, I will always spell it out. Lines of changing longitude run around the globe, 360 degrees. We mark them from 180 degrees west, which we denote negative 180, through 180 degrees east, which we denote positive 180, and then it cycles around. Zero degrees longitude has to be somewhere, and for historical reasons, it's the line that runs through Greenwich, England. So lines of changing latitude run from 90 degrees south at the South Pole, which we denote negative 90, through 90 degrees north at the North Pole, which we denote positive 90. Lines of constant longitude run from pole to pole because anywhere on this line, the longitude is the same. And lines of constant latitude run around the Earth because anywhere on these lines, the latitude is the same. Now, in this lab, you're going to have to measure the longitudes and latitudes of many locations, and you're going to have to measure this off of the globe. So we're going to practice this once in this background section. So I want you to go to the globe and measure the longitude and latitude of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That's the home of Skynet headquarters. And remember to use a negative sign for west longitudes and a negative sign for south latitudes. You can enter these here. And then I want you to Google the true longitude and latitude of Chapel Hill. You can enter those here. And then I want you to calculate a percent error. And then I want you to discuss the sources of error with this kind of measurement. And these sources of error fall into two categories, precision and accuracy. And these two words mean different things. With precision, that has to do with your measuring device in this case, the globe itself. On the globe, you only have a line of longitude or a line of latitude every 15 degrees. And so by eye, the best that you can probably do is only a few degrees. And that's the precision of your measurement. And the thing about precision is half the class will likely be low and half the class will likely be high. Accuracy is different. If you have a source of inaccuracy, that means the entire class will likely be on one side or the other. In the case of this measurement, the primary source of inaccuracy is that Chapel Hill's not on the globe. It's too small. The closest city on the globe is Raleigh. So if you use Raleigh as a proxy, Raleigh is east of Chapel Hill, so everyone's measurements in the entire class will likely be slightly to east. And that's okay. It's okay to not get the measurement perfect, but I want you to describe these two different sources of error. Okay, let's close this background section and open the second background section, which is on the nature of the seasons. First, some terminology. Summer and winter solstice refer to the first days of summer and winter, respectively. Vernal and autumnal equinox refer to the first days of spring and fall, respectively. Then you're presented with the key question of this lab. Why is it hotter on the summer solstice and cooler on the winter solstice? Now, when presented with this question, most people get it wrong. They think it has to do with Earth's proximity to the sun, 
that were closer in summer and farther away in winter. But that's not the case. Earth's orbit is almost perfectly circular, as you can see from this diagram. The Sun and the Earth are not to scale, but Earth's orbit is to scale, and it's almost a perfect circle. Not exactly perfect, but almost. Technically, we are a little bit closer to the Sun in the Northern Hemisphere winter. So clearly, it's not about proximity. So why then is it hotter in summer and colder in winter? And we'll learn in this lab, it has everything to do with the tilt of the Earth. Earth's rotation axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees. So you can see in this diagram, here is Earth orbiting the Sun. The tilt maintains its orientation as the Earth goes around the Sun. So sometimes your hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, and this is summer in your hemisphere, and sometimes your hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun, and this is winter in your hemisphere. And sometimes you're neither tilted toward nor away from the Sun, and these are the equinoxes. Here you can see the diagram for the northern hemisphere. Here the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, so it's summer in the north. And here the northern hemisphere is tilted away, so it's winter in the north. And you're presented with a question here that's worth a point. If it's summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, what is it in the southern hemisphere? Okay. So in the procedure sections, you'll see that the tilt of Earth's rotation axis has two effects. The first is length of day, or in other words, how long a location on Earth is heated by the sun. The second is how high the sun appears in the sky, say at midday, or in other words, how directly the sun's light strikes a given location on Earth. Both of these determine how hot or how cold a location becomes. Okay, that's it for this video.